Dr. Mani Pavitra and today we are at a yoga studio and it is uh, Anshika's yoga studio in Mumbai and this is a beautiful aerial hammock that we are sitting in and uh, today we are here because uh, Anshika has done wonderful work over the last few years with a lot of people and most importantly she has trained most of the celebrities and she has trained our very own Rakul Preet Singh and Lakshmi Manju from our industry so let's get started mm -hmm. welcome to Million Moms thank Anshika you, thank you so much for having me yeah so what made you choose yoga as a profession you know it's a very very uh, interesting story I used to be a pilot mm -hmm. and just when I was about to start flying for the airlines I got into a very bad bike accident an almost fatal accident that left me bedridden for a very long time mm -hmm. so yoga for me began as healing for myself externally as well as internally and then I just fell in love with with yoga the world of yoga and I understood it and then I just never went back to doing anything else. Awesome. That's such a huge thing, right? Like a life-changing uh, experience. You wanted to fly planes and now you're flying in yoga. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So uh, what would you tell a uh, woman uh, who for whatever reason they had planned something out right. and the plans had changed suddenly? Right. You know, just like how you wanted to become an airline pilot. Correct. But, you know, circumstances have led you into yoga. Correct. But you, you embrace it so well that you are doing amazingly well in this profession. Right. Right. So, uh, what would you tell mothers? What was your thought process when you were going through that uh, difficult phase? You know, of course it wasn't easy, but every day, I mean, nothing is permanent. Everything is constantly changing and evolving. So, for me, initially it was a struggle because I loved adrenaline. I wanted to be an airline pilot. I was so young. It, it was such an honor to be a woman and be a pilot. So, you know, I found that sense of respect that I was attaining. I mean, already just gaining that commercial pilot's license. So for me, giving up on that was very, very big. But when I realized what yoga was doing for me and how it was helping me and people around me, I realized that this I love this as much as I love flying. And I am somebody that embraces challenges. Mm -hmm. So, of course, yes, I felt disheartened. I felt like I'm so unlucky or why has this happened with me? Like how anybody would react to a situation. But I was so, so, uh, I mean, I have a great family. They've been so supportive. So, you know, when you have a family that tells you that, hey, it's okay and it happens and you have to, you know, get all your courage and strive and do something bigger, different and better. I feel like I embrace that and I embra embracing that challenge has brought me where I am here today. Talking to you, even getting this opportunity, coming from a background where I thought yoga was so boring. And I mean the way it came to me because of healing, I realized yoga is just not a physical activity. Yoga in itself self means so much more. So that was definitely one of the things I feel like you you're going to get challenges every day in life as a mother, as an individual in life, for everybody, man or woman. And it's important to understand that it's okay to sulk and feel sad for two minutes. <laughs> and then you have to gather up your courage and say, let's, how do we make this better? And how can we make this situation the best? Awesome. How to make most of the most of the situation. situation. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, can you talk about your clients? Because our mothers will get to know the clients right. that, that you're working with. Imagine from someone who suffered from a fatal accident right. to today you are like t teaching the who's who in the industry. Can you talk right. about your clients? My first ever student was Bebo. I oh, mean, wow. the Karina Kapoor was my first student. So, I mean, I cannot be more grateful. Wow. And of course, I have taught a lot of other Bollywood celebrities and your Tollywood celebrity who is just amazing and she's a Bollywood celebrity as well today. Right. So I have not only, I mean, yes, celebrities have been a big part of my students, mm. but of course I come across so many different interesting people as well in, I mean, with what I do. So I'm very lucky, but some of the names I must tell you is, of course, Bebo, uh, from Jacqueline to Tushar, Kapoor, Nimrit Kaur, obviously Rakul and Lakshmi. Also Meera Kapoor. Meera Kapoor. So I mean, we did a lot of prenatal yoga with Meera and uh, Karina both. So awesome. it was very, very nice. And I mean, because Weber was my first ever student going through that transition with her prenatal while she was pregnant, obviously, and postnatal. So 
So I was there during all the stages, so it was very, very nice. Awesome. To have Karina Kapoor as your first student yes. and pre-pregnancy, pre-pregnancy and, and post-pregnancy. post-pregnancy. That's awesome. I think, I think our mothers would love to hear the entire story because, you know, a lot of people get scared. Right. Yeah, even when they have to get conceived, they stop exercising. I'm yes. like... So can you talk yes. about, uh, you know, these are myth busters, I mean, like that we need to, I mean, we have to break these myths, we, this is a myth and we need to bust this myth. It's, I mean, everybody should be exercising, women especially when you want to conceive, because it's very important as you are a doctor, you know, how hip alignment, your pelvis alignment, so many miscarriages actually happen because they do not exercise, you know, and I have seen a lot of apprehension. Uh, but according to yoga, when we do yoga, I always start off after three months. So when at the time, from the know, uh, from the time that they know that they have conceived until three months or until implantation, we always advise anybody who's doing it to, if, if you're a beginner for light exercise, if you have been practicing yoga or exercising every day, we also do advise light exercise during those first three months. But after implantation, it's very important to improve and strengthen that pelvic flow, you know, to hold your baby in. Also, pre, just to conceive, it's important to have your hip alignment correct. Something as small as wearing uh, high heel shoes uh, constantly can misalign your hips and which in turn uh, affects your lymphatic system or the alignment of your uterus to even conceive. So all these things are very important, I feel, which women today don't know. They feel, uh, you know, if we exercise, there might be something wrong or when I am pregnant and I over-exercise, there will be something or, you know, there has been a miscarriage just because of exercise. Yes, it does happen sometimes because of exercise, but that's incorrect exercise. But if you are exercising your uterus, your pelvic floor, the rest of your body correctly, it's very important to host a very healthy environment for your child coming to healthy environment healthy mind you cannot you cannot be stressed out i mean stress is such a long i mean it's such a word that has been used so often people don't realize in especially in a woman it's so important to have your hormonal balance and stress is one of the triggers that actually causes all that confusion inside your body you know so exercise is one of the best things for anti-stress, anti-anxiety and the different kind of external as well as internal issues that one is facing. So yes, there are specific target uh, asanas in yoga as well as we do in lamas to open up your hips, to keep your pelvic flow healthy, use your mola bun, like use your kegel, kegel muscles to strengthen it. Not only pre, pre is when you have to create an environment for to get a healthy baby in. Secondly, when the baby is inside your uterus to make a healthier environment. Thirdly, when the baby, you've delivered the baby to understand that your body has gone through nine months of change. So lots of women think, agar ye karenge, at, nahi to agar, uh, I will walk more than one hour, kuch hone wala hai. Aisa kuch nahi hota hai. That's wrong. Everyone should exercise. Exercise in any way. Yoga, of course, I love because I feel it's the most healthiest way to keep fit while being pregnant because there is so much research gone uh, i mean there is so much research done on each particular asana or posture but any kind of exercise doing correct, a correct exercise is always good any form yes. awesome then you like so please women exercise pre-pregnancy while you're pregnant and post it's very important awesome so what keeps you motivated to get onto the mat Anshuka you know every single day to wake up and get onto the mat not everyone has that self-motivation people go for certain goals you know it's like okay I want to lose that weight or I want to get that shape or I want to get rid of the abs but without any goal uh, how important do you think it is to just get onto the mat and how do you do it You know, honestly, I just love myself so much. I feel that I, especially after my accident, I've only learned to love and respect myself so much more, love and respect my body so much more. And I realized that exercise is not only about looking a certain way. It's so much more than that, you know. Today we see uh, people who are my age, 
early 20s also passing away with heart attacks you know having blockages having so many different issues and also young mothers who are having a lot of miscarriages etc where ideally you feel like the younger you are you should be more healthier which is not true it is how you it's like a it's like how you go into a shop and buy a bag if you maintain your bag and shoes correctly it will last longer so the i mean the human body is made like that so for me really every morning even if i'm feeling little lazy or till date i get a lot of aches and pains because of my accident I had, it was so bad i still have some impact on my spine but i know that after that one hour of being on the mat i am going to feel so happy that this initial struggle of that 10 minutes to get onto the mat i know it will be worth it so of course i have a lot of demotivating days and people like especially all my students motivate me so much because i see improvement in them they motivate me sometimes i take pictures or i write letters to myself this is something so personal that i'm sharing because i feel it's so important i write letters to myself when i am motivated so when i'm not motivated i read it and i know that i need to get on to that mat and i know it will all be worth it such a wonderful tip that you're giving yourself like that you have given to the mothers because uh, that is the biggest challenge you know where uh, they don't find motivation they don't find a reason but i think uh, like even for me uh, though i'm a, an orthodontist by profession i took up yoga only because um, every day going to the class sometimes just like that doesn't you know it, it doesn't work so i thought okay if i teach So I mandatorily have to maintain a certain image, and I have to work on myself. So that, that's why I took up yoga as a as a, a profession. Like I did my certification only because okay, when I start teaching others, if it could be just my family members, but I never realized it will go. Like I start teaching so many people at one go. It just started off very simply for just to keep me fit, but. it's helping a lot of people so i think um, to do that certification you offer a lot of certification courses right yes. you want to talk about it so that if any of our mothers uh, want to take up any certification they can reach out to you so i have just started certifying for i do ttcs of 100 and 200 hours i do a uh, a mat yoga certification as well as the hammock which is fly fit fly fit is a combination of aerial yoga aerial pilates and aerial fitness it actually aids you and assists you into doing a lot of things which you would some of you might not be able to do on the mat and uh, very recently is when i've started uh, also doing a little bit of prenatal certifications so i really feel like even if you don't want to teach it's always nice to get a teacher certification because you just understand better and i realized that any teacher certification really it can change your life exactly. which my first certification did for me mm -hmm. so i will definitely uh, i mean i'd love to have all of you over but whoever's interested should definitely go out there take some time for yourself right. you know and just learn more yeah i feel you know it's like we need to understand our human body Correct. that's the basic thing that all of us need it's irrespective of whether you're going to practice it or not that's a right. different story right. Right. but at least for yourself you Absolutely. know when you're doing for in post whether you're doing it right or Absolutely. not so i i definitely recommend uh, you know teacher training certificate yes, for definitely for every mother i think yes. Yes. Every mother should yes. learn yoga, especially teacher training. I yes, think it's, it's very, yes. very important. Yes, yes. Yeah. very very true so uh, another major area which mothers face challenges they start off very enthusiastically and you know the moment we have a periods or a menstruation they give a break they Correct. think that's the time they need to rest i feel in our current lifestyle we are not having that much of a moment that we need to take specific rest Hmm. In in the olden days, when the mother used to do so much of heavy hard work, those days, okay, a rest was recommended because they are doing so much work and some amount of break is needed. But right now, in our current lifestyle, there's not much movement at all. At the most, we sit for long hours at the desk. Most of the women. What do you think? What's your opinion on this? You know, I have uh, seen uh, students in general on their period during their menstrual cycle that feel a lot of fatigue. Uh, one of the biggest reasons that i mean it's it's a lot to do, do with their mind the way they are feeling especially in a country like india i mean some of the families have been brought up where when you have your period you're not even allowed to go to the kitchens you know so i do not i mean i come from a very educated family and respect to every religion out there i feel like when you have your period it's normal <laughs> number 1 
you do not need to stop exercising yes you might feel a little fatigue but that's because of your different vitamins or your minerals or certain uh, there's something certain lacking in your body it's not because of the period so maybe you should do a few tests outside or talk to your doctor about it then there are some people that also have i mean we get a lot of cysts in our ovaries pcod is on a high so that kind of hormonal trigger can also make you feel more sluggish and sometimes the pain is really real so when it's real we also have asanas in yoga which helps to relieve that so yes when i say exercise you don't have to go then break a sweat or practice so hard you can just go and try to do some stress and pain releasing asanas number one which is very important with yoga uh, we also believe that we shouldn't do certain inversions because it's not because the, your flow naturally is towards gravity and the idea is with yoga we are always trying to take the energy from ground zero above right so this actually triggers with the energy flow you know it has nothing to do with anything else so it's just the energy flow so for a few days you avoid certain inversions but other than that you are allowed to do many things we have again stress release uh, relieving asanas which is very important for days especially which you're tired you're feeling sluggish or you're on a lot of back pain which is so common you know just like taking a small bolster putting it on your lower back and lying down in like your butterfly pose right. is one of the most easiest and the most pain releasing asanas that i also use i feel like i mean i'm a woman and i've grown up with this every single month realizing that certain asanas do work it really does help you and again you know if you are feeling tired in your mind you are going to feel tired in your body so you have to remember that if this con your mind conquers it all even the i mean the cyst in your ovaries is is something it's it's literally i really believe is what you think is what you manifest so all that stress manifests into a lot of disease or any abnormality in your body so this is very important <laughs> yeah and i think with yoga automatically this comes under control Absolutely. because of the breathing yes. do you want to talk about breath work because that's one of my personal favorites and i've seen recently you have connected a breath work uh, program you know i am so big and so passionate about breath work because firstly statistically we only use 1/16th of our lung capacity which is terrible 1/16th is like a speck on the map that's terrible our lungs are meant to you know take in all that oxygen and use it oxygen is full of nutrition and nutrients sometimes just because we are eating right and we're not breathing enough the the real nutrition doesn't reach our organs so breath work is very important and that's something that actually is with you from the time you're born obviously till your last breath true so breathing correctly is very very important breathing the right way helps to relieve diseases breathing the right way helps to release stress breathing the right way helps to just make give you so much blood circulation blood circulation is like nutrition to every organ why do we hang upside down because you want to give the brain in your skin and all these and all your system your endocrine system all the nutrition what does how is nutrition carried with blood how do we get a lot of blood to be carried everywhere with oxygen true so this is you know everything it's, it's so basic but it's so beautiful when you learn it so recently i've started a lot of breath work where i do a lot of uh, different kinds of yogic breathing as well as drills of breath work just to improve that lung capacity awesome. because once that's happening in your yoga practice you will use it for the rest of the day and then you'll slowly become a lifestyle mm -hmm. and um, i personally have been working with breath work over the past 5 to 6 years right. and i've seen cases of uh, terminally ill patients right the way they breathe is exactly opposite yes just with simple yes. correction yes. like like yes. very simple correction yes. and the life starts to change yes. so i believe like you said only 1/16th of the lung is used and uh, if if you see the impact whenever we are stressed or whenever there's something off if people can check their breath can you talk something more about how ca they can wake up immediately with just a simple breath practice you know one of the is like especially when people are getting anxious or something is stressing them out automatically our breath becomes shallow even mine because we are constantly a work in progress but i think for me the time of realizing is become very tiny because of practice so one of the things that i do is stomach breathing abdominal breathing 
where you breathe in your ratio of your breath inhalation then you're holding it in and then your exhalation so inhalation retention exhalation is one first you start with one is to one is to one so if you inhale over two seconds you hold it for two seconds and then you exhale over two seconds right then you go one is to two is to two okay so you, so you always have to exhale more ideally you should exhale twice your inhalation so if you're inhaling for two seconds you should exhale over four seconds what that does it is expel so much so you have more oxygen to take in all this carbon dioxide and all the other toxins are given away but we do the reverse mm -hmm. we inhale for four seconds and we exhale only two seconds like you know? really quick really quickly so mm -hmm. it's so shallow we are not using imagine a balloon so you have to inhale you inhale all this but you exhale only so much of course you have only little space to inhale and all that that's still not great fresh oxygen what's remaining that's uh, that's being filled with more toxins right so the idea is to expel more so you can get in that fresh oxygen constantly so stomach breathing is something which you can start with every morning for even two to three minutes is good enough and then you can just increase it as the day passes and if you feel that you're getting anxious at a certain time just close your eyes count till 10 and start watch your breath don't correct it but monitor your breath see what you're doing and then eventually I think it just becomes a practice so that's one of the easiest uh, versions to do stomach oh. abdominal breathing yeah that's, that's an amazing tip because that one single thing done at least for five minutes every day over like 20 days I think it's going to make a huge difference to Absolutely. people's lives the Absolutely. way they think Absolutely. and all of that so uh, can you talk about uh, Karina's uh, fitness routine right uh, specifically today let me talk about how how it is done pre pre-pregnancy and during pregnancy so firstly before that we used to do a mixture of yoga and a lot of functional uh, HIIT yoga which is just because of my knowledge of HIIT workout as well as functional we just change things around sometimes we use weights or sometimes we used to use different props you know or in the middle we'll maybe do like a squat challenge or like a plank challenge and hold that for longer different movements but a typical yoga practice would be some Surya Namaskars to warm up certain postures, certain asanas that we hold for a long time which is great for toning and uh, certain inversions and arm balances etc. A typical class would go like that but then we would change things up because she is so strong and she was practicing yoga for so long already she is she's so aware of her body so some days we would do the yoga mala which is the 108 surya namaskar or sometimes in the 108 surya namaskar can be done in so many different ways because there are so many different surya namaskars in the yoga world you know in different schools of yoga all the surya namaskars are different and personally even i create my own namaskars because at the end you're doing namaskars are just a set of asanas right so we would do different varieties of uh, surya namaskars as well um, during pregnancy it becomes different you have to understand that we are doing things to uh, help you to have a natural birth right right um, your hips especially is the very is the most important uh, part of your body during your pregnancy physically and obviously it's your mind mentally but so that hip opening is very very good uh, some I, I i know my mom always says that you should do katka <laughs> you'll have a clean room as well as you know you're in that deep Squat Malasan it is called. It is one of the best uh, poses to sit in. It strengthens your pelvic flow. Very, very important. We would do a lot of uh, awareness of the Mula Band, like your Kegels. So a lot of contractions, understanding the Kegels. The Kegel muscle is so, I mean, very easily confused to be your gluteus, which is your uh, bum muscles. So women, especially if you all are squeezing in your bum muscles, your bum is getting squeezed in and you're clenching and you think you all are working on your Kegels, that's not happening. So just the awareness, the building of awareness was is something that we do during a, while a woman is pregnant. A lot of breath work because sometimes the women's body is made in such a way that uh, sometimes the body, you are of a small frame. So the baby. baby is pushing into your rib cage, into your diaphragm. Anyways, you are using 1 16th of the lung capacity. Imagine how much more it's reduced, you know. So breath work is very important to increase that volume in your chest cavity, in your diaphragm. So even when the baby is pushing up, uh, your breath work helps you to be healthier. Uh, that's how it was really different. Lot of breath work, lot of uh, strengthening, 
uh, for cardio, she would always do walks specifically mm. to her. And we were always uh, preparing for a natural birth. Mm. Then it is the woman's choice what they want to do at the end of the day, right? Or sometimes, I mean, because of situation, you can't help it. Mm. But a typical uh, prenatal, like a pregnancy uh, yoga workout practice would be modified Surya Namaskars, which is... You can do a lot of, sometimes not a lot of forward Forever bending bends, after too. a certain month. You cannot also lie on your back for mm -hmm. a long time, right? So we would have modified Surya Namaskars, pregnancy Surya Namaskars, I would call it. It can get challenging. It's not boring. So anybody who thinks yoga practices during pregnancy is boring, it's not. It's very challenging you. if you're doing it in the right way. <laughs> a lot of squats because squats is preparing the hips, True. keeping them aligned. So sometimes you can have strong hips, but they, they are misaligned. So when you have misaligned hips, it's not, of course, it's not uh, healthy for the baby, right? That's when all the complications arise. So a lot of opening, a lot of strengthening of the hips, the pelvic flow, and a lot of breath work and pranayam for the mind just to keep calm. Sometimes some people, uh, they didn't have any morning sickness, so it was beautiful. The whole journey with her was so beautiful. But, and again, she was my first uh, prenatal pregnancy, pregnant student, so it was amazing. And just to keep calm, I think because of so much responsibility and especially for her being a working uh, individual, things become a little more harder, you yes. know. So just realizing that, yes, you will feel tired. That will happen because you're not only eating for one, you're eating for two. You're carrying, you're carrying a load in your system which you're not ready for, you're not prepared for. But with yoga, it becomes slightly easier. And let me talk about post-pregnancy. So, post-pregnancy, I must tell you that baby was back on the mat in two weeks. Yeah, and week. like, in, yes, you know, the in way she weeks. became so fit yes, later on. in two weeks. It was beautiful and motivating for me because I realized that we have been taught that, you know, 40 days, don't do anything, you know, be on bed, eat those laddus and, you know, so many different things. So, yes, those laddus are very important. Why? Because it's just an amalgamation of all the nutrition that you need. So there are very, various different ways to do that. Uh, exercise after two weeks because of the awareness in the body. Uh, during pregnancy, your body releases a hormone which allows your body to become very, like it stretches, right? right? right. right. It stretches a lot. Right. So sometimes when that happens, to, it's like a rubber band. So when you stretch and that hormone is not being produced anymore, if you stretch it further, you will injure it. Right. So just keeping that awareness, like for example, if you're splitting, you would get fl full splits. True. But to control your body to realize not to overstretch is one of the biggest things to teach somebody postnatal. Mm. Because of that excess, uh, you can call it slack, mm. slack in your body. You feel that, oh, we have become more flexible, but that's not true. No, not true. So that's one of the things that I saw post-pregnancy to be very aware, aware of, of yeah. and I think just building the core strength, mm. you know, because you do sometimes, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, I don't know how to pronounce this properly, always I mess up, it's called diastasis recti, yeah, right? Diastasis recti. So it's actually a separation of your abdominal muscles, muscles yeah. which is very, very, firstly, very important. You should not have a breakage in it. Exactly. If you've had a breakage in it, it's not the, it's not very nice. Mm. Physically, it's not very nice as well. So it can be very demeaning for somebody to see that and feel and sulk about it. But I must tell everybody out there, there is a way to reverse it. Yes. I've had students who've had this and they don't understand what kya hua hai. But actually the connection, your connective, it, connective tissue has been damaged. True. So to, you have to keep your, just because you have a big belly, you can still do a little bit of core work to make sure that that connectivity is, does not break. True. And if it has, it's okay, don't be disheartened. Go to a mat, go to a good, come to Bombay, practice with me, otherwise go to, I said Bombay, huh? by yeah. the way, I'm getting into trouble. <laughs> but uh, find a yoga teacher who understands that. Yes. And or find, find a fitness expert that understands that breakage and they will help you and guide you to work through it to build that again. Mm. A strong core doesn't only mean that you have six pack abs. Mm. A strong core means that you, your abdominal muscle is healthy. True. You know? Yeah. So this is, so post-pregnancy was all about those core strengthening for her. Then we slowly started introducing so more did you cardio. Uh, core strengthening before six weeks? Uh, uh, this is while she was pregnant or no, post? Post-pregnancy. Uh, yes. Yeah, yes, awesome. yes, yes, okay. Very slightly, mm. very slightly. No, you cannot under do too much. Under always monitoring, yeah. always monitoring. Mm. And you know, I have also known people who, 
they've delivered say today and tomorrow they have gone for a walk mm. so always remember everybody is different, different exactly what you can do doesn't mean that your friend and, can and do personally i feel people should not watch yoga videos and do it Never. because you know uh, yoga is something which is guru yes. personalized for that particular person yes. so i i feel it's not safe to just look at yoga video and just do something at home a teacher has to be there a guru has to be there to monitor and understand the person's body absolutely like i have my own youtube channel and over there all my asanas have contraindications awesome. but that's very important to read mm. and if you have those you shouldn't do it mm. you know or if you have learned from someone who have the awareness you can still do it but when you're pregnant i strongly advise don't get into anything complicated keep it simple simple is the best mm. keep it simple and you will be fine and you will be healthy and you will i mean you will be very happy awesome so what about rakul our rakul who trains with oh, you oh she so. is i have to tell you she inspires me every day even this morning she is so she so aware she so motivated and so focused and with rakul uh, she loves to invert you're sitting on a favorite hammock by the way <laughs> and for her inverting is bliss yes she feels all those you know those toxins release the blood rush to her brain her head her face getting stimulated and anyway she's so pretty it just like you have to see her after inversion she's just happy and red but her yoga practice would be a mixture of everything i do uh, some mat yoga fly fit some pilates all of that we we'll always do she enjoys yoga for the essence of it so she understands asanas postures a mixture of again surya namaskars lots of postures some few challenging headstands and core drills and the full practice on the hammock she loves it and she's so aware again i said she's so aware of her body so it, you know she, we are very focused and we know what we are doing and she's also does a lot of breath work herself awesome right so mm. she's so that's one of the things that we do and i mean we practically when she is in the city we are doing practicing every day mm. which is lovely mm. so to have that motivation itself is, is such a big thing yes yeah so another thing with young girls nowadays uh, they don't want periods you know it's like they don't respect and honor the most beautiful part of a human body you being a young girl right. you must have uh, gone through some situations like this or you have spoken to your friends where they say you know it's so can you talk a little bit about uh, you know i'll tell you even sometimes i hate the fact that are today i have my period for example if i want to do a handstand ha huh, you can or if i want to do a headstand i can't so i feel like or if i want to go swimming and sometimes you can't you know so then that's when you feel like you know i wish i didn't have my period but i mean it is the only normal thing and you should be grateful like exactly. i meet so many people that don't get their period right this is exactly you, what i want to talk about you know about, yeah you know? you know pco dpcos mm. is on such a high so please be very grateful if your period is regular if it's clockwork it's the best thing when your period doesn't come regularly it's a sign that your body is telling you that please go to a doctor exactly please go check something there's something happening internally which is not working out for you so um, Yes as much as it's messy and it's icky and oh god we can't do so many things having a period every month is the best thing in the world as somebody who doesn't get it because then there are then they have symptoms like excessive hair growth on places where you, as a woman you shouldn't be having so much your face breaks out because of so much of heat and the incorrect hormonal balance uh, most importantly you're always uh, triggered with the right wrong kind of hormone which is anxiety or stress so you're angry or you're moody and so many things so having a yoga practice stimulates your endocrine system it stimulates all your systems from your respiratory to your circulatory but more importantly it keeps that balance of your hormones perfect and when that happens that can reverse your pcod awesome. that can reverse your pcos certain asanas help your blood flow to go through your reproductive organs to keep it healthy and especially being women guys we have to realize that we can bring another life into the world so we have to create the best and most healthy environment right so we have to work towards that and even if you don't want to have a child you still need to get your period regularly that's normal as a woman for every it's like breathing your respiratory system functions the best when you're breathing a lot of oxygen similarly when you get your period every month it's going to keep i mean your even your metabolism so not getting your period slows down your metabolism you know so it keeps your bmr high it keeps you energetic and very very healthy and looking beautiful so uh, for women around menopause 
uh, they have a lot of hot flushes and there's a lot of stuff which they go through. Do you think yoga will help for them? Yes, absolutely. Firstly, menopause is again normal, right? It will happen to you. Uh, the healthier you are, uh, I mean doctors say that and research says the healthier you are, it can get delayed. But it will happen anyway. The best way to look after that is how you would look after a mood swing or how you would look after something that you know is going to happen to you. So as an individual, as a woman, you know it is going to happen to you. Prepare for it when you know that you're getting moody or you're feeling certain symptoms. You can go to your doctor, you can get it checked, you can get it confirmed. Once that's happening, you have to realize again that means your hormones, are, some certain hormone is not being produced anymore, which you have to understand, which is a big change in your life. You've been having it for so long and then it suddenly stopped. So as you would treat something which goes away, you take care of the rest. So you focus on your breath work. You do a lot of uh, yoga asanas which are specific to taking care of your endocrine system, which is your blood circulation, your hormonal secretions. And also you keep just the, again, I keep emphasizing on blood circulation because that is so important. Even going for a walk is good enough, mm -hmm. you know. I see a lot of women get very, very lazy when they menopause, they feel tired and fatigued. It's as good as another challenge. It will happen to you, yes, because there is a certain uh, wiring in your body that's changed. So to beat that, again, it's very mental. So mental, you go back to meditation, you go back to breath work, you go back to pranayams that help you to understand that this is also you being lazy, mm. you know. So to be energetic, you have to fight it a little bit and then it becomes a habit. Yes. So this is one thing I realize when, when people are reaching menopause. I have a lot of students that have uh, are post menopause and they are so active. Some of them are more active than I am today, right. you know, right. uh, working, running successful businesses, uh, acting, so many things, you know. So for them, it's all about, they understand, huh, ye ho ra hai, but it's okay, you know, and just treat it as normal. The more you treat something normal, which is normal, <laughs> the more normal it will be. <laughs> awesome, I love that. Treat everything mm -hmm. normally. Treat menopause as a normal part of your life. Absolutely, mm -hmm. yes. So any message that you want to wind up with and yes. just talking to our mother? Uh, Please, you all must have heard this cliche line, love yourself, but you have to love, not only love yourself, but also respect yourself, understand that your mind and body is all connected, keep everything healthy, your mind is as flexible as your body is, remember that, um, keep exercising, do a lot of yoga and stay healthy, thank you. Thank you, thank you so much. The 21 days challenge. Log into www.millionmoms.in. For more details, contact 77024 9110.